All right, happy chillax Sunday. Uh, there is no strength today. Today's conditioning is simply taking a walk outside. Whether it's your neighborhood, a park, somewhere, get outside, enjoy that weather, get some fresh air. 20 minutes at least. Make it as fast or as slow as you want. And that's it. Later you might need a foam roller and I've got some stretches for you to cool down. All right, hopefully that was an awesome walk. Make sure that you record where you walked in Sugarwad if you're one of our members. Hopefully it was a park or something, but if it's just the neighborhood, that's cool too. Um, after the walk, we want to do a cool down. So uh, if you have one of these guys, these foam rollers, let's use it. Um, foam rollers is a great object to kind of self-massage those muscles. Um, get some myofascial release. There's several different methods, several different ways you can do this. Um, but just to go over some major parts, you can roll your calves. Um, basically, you need to be able to support yourselves, get your hips off the ground, and kind of roll on that calf. Um, you can do both legs. It's not quite as much tension on the calf and, and the uh, attachments down below. If you're at a higher tolerance, um, you can always add some pressure by crossing your legs over for whichever calf you're working on. Uh, and if you find a sticking point, kind of stay on it for 10 to 20 seconds. Loosen that up. You can go into the quads, hamstring area here, or the hamstring, sorry, and roll that way. Same thing, find a sticking point, stay with it. You're thinking about 30 seconds of rolling per body part-ish or more. It kind of depends on you. Um, you can get into your uh, glute area here. If you have any sciatic issues or anything like that, this, uh, this does a great job of kind of targeting that glute and loosening up that whole area. Kind of make that figure four with your, your ankle over your opposite knee here and just kind of roll on that glute. Um, obviously you can flip over Roll the quads. You can get that IT band on the side. You can get that adductor. Kind of put the roller at a 45 degree angle. Get that um, shin and knee over the roller and then just kind of roll in toward your groin area and back to get that front of the quad adductor area you can always roll your back try to keep it above mid back kind of right where the ribs start just for safety there cross the arms if you can touch elbow to elbow do it and you just basically roll up to the shoulder blades and back down stay away from the neck area try not to roll your hood under the roller so that you limit your movement <laughs> And again, sticking anywhere that you feel um, needs some work. Uh, last but not least, you can roll your lats just by kind of getting on your side and rolling between the shoulder into the top of the rib cage there and back. And you can roll your pecs. Um, kind of nestle it in that top of that shoulder and just kind of move it back and forth just really getting that pec in that front of the shoulder you can also kind of do a swimmer's arm on that that feels good anyway those are just a few roller foam roller techniques if you've got one use it if you don't have one no sweat i'm gonna give you three other stretches to go through uh right now with the world's greatest stretch we're gonna rest 30 seconds in each pose i'm gonna show you that now uh, so start with the world's greatest stretch, get in that plank position, then bring your right foot on the outside of that right hand. You're going to leave that left hand planted. You're going to try, lift that right hand up and try to bring that right elbow to the ground. That is a very strong word, try. Don't. Uh, 
not everybody should be able to, so don't worry about it if you can't, but the point is you're stretching this area right here, your hamstring, your groin area is opening up. So we're gonna hold this position for about 30 seconds. So from this position, you're gonna go into a pigeon pose. So you can leave that left arm planked and just bring that leg under, right leg under. Lower yourself onto your elbows if you can. If you can bring your head down, great. But you're gonna hang into this uh, pigeon pose for 30 seconds. You can kind of rock back and forth, take deep breaths, try to stretch lower each time, but hold that position for about 30 seconds. After the pigeon, come on up into a straight leg, hamstring stretch, bring that toe up. If you can reach that toe, pull it toward you, and you're stretching this holding this position for about 30 seconds if you want to do a more dynamic release and stretch for that 30 seconds, you can. And then lastly, keeping that foot forward, you're gonna work into a hip flexor stretch, bring those hands overhead, push them toward the ceiling and lower, feeling that stretch in the hip flexor. I'll switch sides for you just so you can see. Again, hands toward the ceiling, lower, leg, arch the back, feeling that stretch here, and hold for about 30 seconds for that pose, and then do the opposite side. Again, holding 30 seconds for each of those poses of the world's greatest stretch. All right, for that lizard pose, you're gonna get down on the ground. You're gonna have your right leg is forward, left hand on the ground. You're gonna grab that left foot with your right hand. And then you're gonna kinda of ease forward, stretching that hip flexor area and that quad attachment and just kind of leaning forward into that. Now you can gradually hold and breathe and every time you exhale, try to stretch a little further for 30 solid seconds, or you again can go dynamic with that and release the tension, go back in. Trying to get a deeper stretch though, each time on that hip flexor front area. I'll do it with the opposite leg. You might get a better view. So again, grabbing your right foot with your left hand and just bringing that left foot forward so that you can kind of lean in and stretch that hip flexor area. Really good quad stretch here too. And if you can, bring that chest up high. And again, you can either do that static, trying to stretch a little deeper each breath or releasing and dynamically going deeper. So that is the lizard pose. The second one is the scorpion stretch. Some of you might be familiar with this one. Basically laying on your stomach for this. Your arms are out just above 90 and then let's start with the left leg you're gonna bring that left foot over the back and you should feel a stretch in your uh, right shoulder and then a kind of an opening up of your thoracic area and you don't want to touch the ground with this you just want to let it hover you get a little more of a stretch out of it that way. And again, you can hold these for 30 seconds. Um, or if you want, you can do these dynamically by rotating each side. 
Let's make sure those arms are straight, slightly above 90 with those hands, arms, and really feeling that stretch. Keeping that leg hovering, not touching the ground with that foot. Scorpion stretch. So 30 seconds each side of those, about a minute total time for each of those movements. That's your cool down. After that, you can do the shutdown challenge or you can fast forward through this cool down, do the shutdown challenge, then come back and do the cool down. Might be better. Uh, anyway, that's April 2nd for you. Have a great day, you guys. All right, so the new challenge has accumulating one full minute of elbow planking. Also, after that, accumulating one full minute of hollow holds. After that, you're going to do 48 push ups, more push ups, but think how ready you'll be for Murph. Um, and then after the 48 push ups, you're going to do 10 light, emphasize light goblet squats. Okay? So this is going to increase daily by five seconds on the holds for the plank and the hollow hold, by one push up, and by two light goblet squats each day that we continue to be closed due to this virus that's out there. All right, so let's show you the movements. Elbow plank, you probably know, but I'm gonna show you down on those elbows. On the balls of those toes, your core is engaged. You're pressing down, pressing into that ground with your elbows and your feet, your toes. Really pressing down, really squeezing the abs, squeezing pretty much every possible muscle you can during this hold to get the most out of it. All right, that is your elbow plank. Hollow hold. Make that bowl with your body. Leg raise, arms up and out. Make sure your shoulders are off the ground. Basically only touching the ground from the center of your back to your tailbone and holding. Engage that core. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Push-ups, push-ups you know, push-ups you love. And start in that full plank position down chest to the ground elbows are in either 45 degrees or tighter and up push up now if you don't have the full strict push up no problem go to your knees down up down up and if you need to scale that even further find that coffee table bench chair side of your rig and do your push-ups into that object. All right, then last but not least, tablet squats. This is not necessarily light, but it is a kettlebell in the goblet position. Elbows are in, nice and racked. Your goblet is hugging your chest. Um, squat stance for these. And you're gonna start with that butt back. So push the butt and hips back, down, parallel or below, and back up. Have a blast with this shutdown challenge. It doesn't matter when during the day you do this, it is meant to be as well as your normal workout for the day. Uh, you can do it throughout the day, piece it up. Do it throughout the day, you can do it before you go to bed. You can do it as soon as you wake up. It's your workout, it's your challenge. Just have fun with it. Thanks guys. Hey folks, really appreciate you tuning in. Please do us a favor, press that like button, subscribe, find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram, like us, like us, follow us, follow us. Stay healthy.